All right, I'm going to be grading every NBA deadline trade, and so there's about 20 to get to. First trade, Pistons get Corey Joseph, two second rounders. Kings get DeLon Wright. I'll give the Pistons a B plus, getting a veteran point guard and two twos, and I'll give the Kings a B because DeLon Wright could be a nice backup point guard with Halliburton playing more of the two. Number two, Nuggets get JaVale McGee. The Cavaliers get Isaiah Hartenstein, a protected second, and another second. I'll give the Nuggets a C plus. McGee could be a pretty solid backup center. They did give up two second rounders for him. I don't know if he's worth that. I'll give the Cavaliers a B minus because they did get the second rounders. Okay, number three, Bulls get Al Camino and Nikola Vucevic, and the Magic get Wendell Carter Jr., Otto Porter Jr., and two first rounders. I'm going to give the Bulls an A because they got an all-star center who's super underrated, really, really good player, and a solid defensive wing. I'm going to give the Magic an A- minus because they did get the two first rounders. Now they should be in the middle because the Bulls should be pretty competitive with Vucevic if Levine stays. And they did take on a lot of salary in Porter Jr. And I think Wendell Carter Jr. has a little bit of potential, but he probably, he's probably maxed out as a uh, high-end bench five. Fourth trade, Celtics get Evan Fournier, and the Magic get Jeff Teague and two second rounders. I'll give the Magic a B- minus because Fournier's contract was up after this year, and they got somebody who can, Teague can put in some minutes, probably not super productive, but they did get two second rounders. I'll give the Celtics an A because they got a elite scorer to come off the bench and only gave up really two second rounders because they weren't using Jeff Teague much anyway. All right, next trade, uh, Magic get... Gary Harris, R.J. Hampton, and a slightly protected first rounder. And the Nuggets get Gary Clark and Aaron Gordon. I'll give the Magic a B plus because Harris is still a solid role player on the wing. R.J. Hampton has some upside, and they did get the first, and everybody knew they were trading Gordon. I'm going to give the Nuggets an A, though, because I think Gordon fits super well with Jokic. He can be a really explosive four to go with Jokic at the five, and I think it puts Nuggets right back up into that top tier in the West. Yeah, just a really solid move for them. Next trade, Bulls get Troy Brown Jr. and Mo Wagner, and the Wizards get Daniel Gafford and Chandler Hutchinson. I'll give the Wizards a C plus because they did need the big help, and Gafford is a better defender than Wagner, and Hutchinson's really just a shot in the dark to see if we can get some perimeter production from him. Bulls got Brown Jr., who should be a nice... Wing defender and Wagner should be a more productive center, but he's actually going to get traded later, which I'll talk about. And that's why they got a B plus. Uh, next trade, Kings get Mo Harkless and Chris Silva, and they get Nemanja Bozlika. I'll give the Kings a B minus on this one. Harkless is a solid wing defender, and Silva has some upside. And I'll give the Heat a B because Bozlika will help spread the floor. All right. Next trade, three-team trade. Sixers get George Hill and, and Ignas Brazdigas. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Knicks get Terrence Ferguson, Vincent Poirier, and two and a two from Philly. And the Thunder get Tony Bradley, Austin Rivers, and two twos from Philly. I'll give the Sixers a B. Hill is a solid addition to help with their playoff push. I'll give the Knicks a B plus because they did get the second rounder and. Uh, Poirier has some upside, upside, and they weren't really using Austin Rivers. And I'll give the Thunder a B plus too, because you know they're accumulating picks, two second rounders. Bradley could be somebody they might want to develop at the five, and Rivers isn't going to uh, really stick around, but he didn't cost that much. So, uh, ninth, I'm gonna have the River, the Raptors are acquiring Rodney Hood and Gary Trent Jr. from the Trailblazers in exchange for Norman Powell. Give the Raptors a C plus because they did get younger with Trent Jr. as opposed to Powell. I don't see Hood playing too much, but he's, I guess, okay. But they did get younger with Trent Jr. And I'll give the Blazers a B because they probably won't retain Norman Powell, but they got a really nice score and perimeter shooter for down the stretch. And I think the Blazers are a sneaky team to contend this year. All right, next trade, the Jazz get Matt Thomas, and the Raptors get a second rounder. I'll give the Jazz a B, because Matt Thomas is a really solid perimeter player, and I'll give the Raptors a B, because uh, they didn't really, they weren't really using Matt Thomas, and they got a second rounder out of it. 11, the Hawks get Lou Williams, two second rounders in cash, while the Clippers get back Rajon Rondo. I think this is a really good move for the Hawks. I'm going to give them an A-. They got nice scoring out of Williams, two second rounders and money. 
And honestly, in a trade involving Lou Williams and Cash or Rajon Rondo, I'd actually expect the Clippers to get picks out of that, which is why I'll give the Clippers a C- minus because they did not need to give up those second rounders, in my opinion. All right, next trade, the Raptors got a second rounder from the Kings for Terrence Davis. I'll give the Raptors a B plus because, again, they were, this is another player they weren't really using. And I'll give the, Sings a, the Kings a C plus because um, Terrence Davis has, some, Davis has some legal issues, but he does have a bit of upside. 13, I uh, got the Rockets getting Avery Bradley, Kelly Olenek, and the right to swap their 2022 first rounder with the Heat, and the Heat getting Victor Oladipo. Given the Heat an A here, it's two role players who weren't really playing that much, and the swap right probably won't even be used because I fully expect the Heat to have a worse first rounder than the Rockets. I give the Rockets an F because in this situation they essentially turned Karis Levert, who they got out of the Harden trade, and a second rounder into Avery Bradley, Olenek, and a swap they're not going to use. So they really got nothing, almost nothing back for Karis Levert and this was just a disaster for them. Next trade, you got the Warriors getting the rights to Katie Leland and the Spurs getting Marquise Chris and some cash. I'll give the Spurs a C plus for, you know, acquiring some cash. They might want to keep Chris around next year, but he's hurt right now. And I'll give the Warriors a C plus for getting Chris off their books. 15, we got the Celtics getting Luke Cornett and Mo Wagner, and the Bulls getting Daniel Tice. I'll give the Celtics a B minus. I think Mo Wagner is a step down from Tice, but uh, he could be better down the road, and I'll give the Bulls a B plus because Tice is a step up from Wagner, and now they have a really nice post situation with Vucevic and Tice and Markinen and Trey, and that is young as they're going to start to make. Uh, some moves up and I think the standings in the east all right next trade we got the Pelicans getting James Johnson Wes Owondo in a two for and the Mavericks getting Nicolo Melli and JJ Redick give the Mavs a B plus because I like Melli's perimeter ability and JJ Redick's perimeter ability and scoring obviously it gives them a couple shooters down the stretch where they do Doncic and Porzingis are gonna need some help mostly Doncic and Pelicans, I'll give them a B minus because I do like James Johnson's versatility. Owando does have some upside, and they got a two. And Redick was not going to be a key player for them down the stretch. All right, next trade. This one happened a few days ago. The Bucks got Rodney, Rodney Karuks, PJ Tucker, their own 2022 20, first back, and cash from the Suns. The Rockets got DJ Augustine, DJ Wilson. Uh, pick swap from the Bucks that would turn a their second rounder into a first rounder and the Bucks 2023 one and the Suns got Torrey Craig from the Bucks. So first of all I'm going to give the Suns an A minus giving up cash for Torrey Craig. Craig's a nice role player can slot in defensively for them in their defensive lineups and the kind of veteran defender that they will probably need down the stretch as they look to compete in the West. I'll give the Bucks a B they did get their first rounder back, but they gave up a two to one swap and a 20, 23 one. The players they gave up in this though weren't super important to their team, and they did get Kirks and Tucker, who should contribute down the stretch. But it's not really the big trade I wanted the Bucks to make in order to really be a contender. And the Rockets, I'll give an A minus because they were able to turn some players that they were going to get rid of. P.J. Tucker didn't want to be there. They were able to turn it into a 2-1 to one pick swap and uh, move their first rounder from the Bucks back a year, which helps them in that it'll probably be a higher first rounder later on because more things could go wrong in Milwaukee. Next trade, we got the Heat getting Trevor Ariza and the Thunder getting Myers Leonard in a 2. I'll give the Thunder a, C, Thunder a C plus. They did get the 2. They're building up draft capital, but... Myers Leonard, there's the whole controversy with him, and he's not that good of a player anymore. He's also out for the year. And I'll give the Heat a B- minus because I think Ariza can be a solid uh, wing player down the stretch. Just another solid depth piece that they could put in when competing. All right, uh, 19th, I got the Clippers getting a protected two, and the Kings getting, I'm not sure how to pronounce this correctly, my Fiondu Kabengale and a protected two. Uh, the player in this doesn't really matter. It's really just opening up a roster spot for the Clippers. 
and just a protected two pick swap. So I'll give both teams a C plus. And then last, the Warriors got Cash and the Hornets got Brad Wanamaker. Give the Warriors a B. They weren't really using Wanamaker much and they got some cash because they do have a huge salary cap issue and they're gonna need some cash. And I'll give the Hornets a B plus after losing Lamella Ball. They did need a playmaking point guard that they can use down the stretch. And that's it. That's uh, the 20 trades that I'm grading for the trade deadline.